Major announcements at San Diego Comic-Con just took place, but the biggest one of all is right here. What? Welcome back, gainers, to another incredible, exciting, fantastic episode of Comic Game Time. And if you're new to the show, I'm Adam. I'm Zach, and this is Princess Royal House, looking very lovely today, just like usual, doing the Princess Wave, you do it too. And of course, as always, here's the Coco Dog. Comic Coco in the house. All right, I hope everyone had an awesome weekend. San Diego Comic Con just took place, probably one of, if not the biggest of the Comic Cons. In the world. I mean, New York's pretty big too, right? But mm -hmm. usually, for some reason, they do a lot of the big announcements at San Diego Comic-Con. So, the games crew thought we'd get together and hook you guys up with some valuable what? Books. Information. Knowledge. Yes. Knowledge, books too. Books and knowledge. Drop some book knowledge. So, we have the 10 hottest books from San Diego Comic-Con exclusives 2024 voted on by America Actually, just the people in this room. So mm. it's just us three. We we got together. We voted Coco too. She got the final. She like got the little mouth like Tsh, you know like Tsh. definitely. And to make things interesting, we thought we'd pick our five least favorite covers of San Diego Comic Con. And there's a lot of things going on, and we'll we'll chat a little bit about the books before we roll into it. But before any other major announcements, we're thirsty right about yes. now. Right yes. about meow. So I'm doing a classic, but also subtracted, you know, a little bit. In it's A and W, root beer, but zero sugar. Ooh! I like the zero sugar kick because there's low calories in it. I feel like root beer is like pure sugar. <laughs> like, Not this one. This, this one's got artificial no sugar. and no calories, and it has that extracted vanilla, the really? aged vanilla. Oh nice! Yeah, so it's delicious. How is it? Have you had it yet? Is that the first time? No, I've had it before. Okay. But Do you like it though? Good. Yeah, I like it. That it's one's the no caffeine too, huh? No caffeine, which is unfortunate, but oh well. I find it other places. I find it under the rocks. You were else you could you also find caffeine other places? Hanging out with us on, on whatnot. whatnot. Yeah, every Saturday. Uh check our listing times because they vary, but we actually have a double header this weekend. So if you want to see the boys early. We're getting the band back together. It's going to be 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Adam and Zach crushing it. Dollar starts 30 second auctions. And the lovely princess will pick up at 6 p.m. to lay the hammer down, right? Yes. So many, many, many keys to be had. Yeah. Definitely want to definitely want to meet up with us this weekend. All right. So before we kick off this crazy, crazy list, there was actually some pretty big announcements going on at San Diego Comic-Con. We did learn... The title for the new Fantastic Four is going to be called First Steps, which I don't, that's like awesome and lame at the same time. I'm not really sure. It's like the baby's first step. I know. Like, I really like the idea of like this period piece Fantastic Four, like do it in the 60s and they've been missing all these years. I love that. I love the idea of that. So they don't have to be like, where have they been? Like where, like this whole time or they were just created because they're kind of the OG and they need yeah. to be the OG. But First Steps is weird. Yeah. Marvel's first family. I guess. I don't, yeah, it does. It sounds like they're going to be a bunch of babies or something. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, right? But uh, we also learned they're maybe renaming, or they are renaming Avengers 5, which I think was Secret Wars, but now it's going to be Doomsday, which is also cool but weird at the same time. Like, Doomsday is like a Superman villain, but we're going to call it Doomsday. So it's like, haha, DC, we stole your name first. And uh, Robert Downey Jr. came out wearing a Doom costume, which I haven't read too deep into this. Like, is he... I feel like they'd be really bad if he was Doom. I don't mind if, like, he's, like, the AI Doom, but I don't actually want him to be Doom. Like, do you? Not really. No, no he's our really. Iron Man. I don't want him to also be a villain. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but it's cool. At the same time, Russo Brothers, who arguably directed the best Avengers movie so far, they did, like, Endgame and In Infinity War. Mm -hmm. um, they're coming back to direct that one, so that's kind of a good thing, because I think they were a little wishy-washy on who was going to direct those movies. And then uh, other big announcement, like Adamantium now is going to be in the Marvel Universe. And it has been official. It is now coming from the Celestials. So oh, they're mining that Celestial that died in uh, um, Eternals movie. Oh, okay. And apparently the metal that's inside it is going to be the Adamantium, which I super dig that. You know, that's not the the way it was in the comics, but I really like this way of finding it. It's not just some random metal they found in, like... Mysterious metal yeah. of unknown origin. In the jungle. 
So some good stuff. Some good stuff. And it sounds like uh, what Giancarlo Esposito. Everyone's wondering who he's going to be. He's going to be Sidewinder in uh, Captain America 4. So definitely they're pulling out the Serpent Society. Okay. Everyone's least favorite villain group. So yes. we'll see how that goes. All right, let's get into it. Let's kick this off. We're going to start with our favorite books, starting at number 10. So we'll work our way to number one. Like I said, this was voted on by us. So take it with a grain of salt, whether or not you want to go. So number 10, Zach. Oh, yeah. Number 10 is Absolute Batman, number one, but the Ash Can Edition, straight from San Diego Comic-Con. Black and white, so they skimped on uh, any of the coloring, you know, make it a little cheaper. But it's a fantastic cover, and it's pretty limited, and it's starting out a brand new DC Batman universe. So. Yeah, so this one took me by surprise, and I actually wanted this to be a little bit higher, but the team didn't vote on it higher. I thought this could have been a number one book. In my book, that's too many books. Uh, cover by Nick Dragota. This is going to be who's actually drawing the, the new Absolute Batman, which is the ultimate universe, but for DC, they're calling it Absolute. It's going to be... Uh, written also by Scott Snyder, which is going to be fantastic. I didn't realize it's a foil edition, too. So this oh, ash can comes in a foil, and there was many copies there signed by Scott Snyder, so a lot of them, or uh, Scott signed by uh, Nick Dragota, so a lot of them are signed by Nick Dragota, and it's selling quite a bit already. Um, in the signed version, it's selling for like 500 and the non-signed for, uh, or no, 135 $135. Okay. Okay. It's <laughs> limited to 500 500 copies, so it's pretty limited. I would be a very happy boy if I could find this copy. So, the team doesn't agree on this book. I like this one, though. So, number nine! Number nine. Number nine. We got Witchblade number one, the new series. Witchblade comes back again. It's an awesome Rachel Lynn cover. And, you know, what more can I say? It's a virgin. You can really see all the artwork very clearly. I, I think it's a beautiful cover. Yeah. I think Rachel Lynn hit it. Hit a home run. Yeah, and this book is going to be published by Top Cow slash Image. So they're publishing it together. Obviously, everyone has like, nowadays, Image has like double publishing with everything. Everybody owns their other version of it. But yeah, Witchblade's back. And uh, I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't buy this to read. I never read the original Witchblade, so that's why I kind of was a little bit iffy on trying to pick up this new one. But hopefully, it's a good jumping on point for everyone that wants to uh, pick it up. Definitely been a hot book at... The con this year, a lot of exclusives, as you will see on our list. Good news about this one, um, they didn't have a print count on this one, and it's selling for fairly cheap. You can pick one up online for $22. So if oh. you really like this book, it's pretty expensive. It's just a booth exclusive. So okay, that's you cool. went to a booth, picked it up, got yeah. yourself a Rochelin. Booth, where it is. Booth, booth. All right, and number eight is, which is my favorite. Oh, time. which play number one? Again? Again. Again. Merc on Dolpha, though. Oh, okay. I, I really love Merc on Dolpha. I met her once. Fantastic lady. She speaks mixed, you know, mixed English, but uh, it, you know, she's fantastic and a she great artist. She was really nice. She was really she nice. She was really nice, yeah. Yes. She, tr she told me to leave very nicely. When I stayed too long, so I like that. I like that. Yeah, again, like we said, uh, Witchblade, definitely a hot book at the con this year with the number one coming out. Same thing as the last one. Uh, this is just the America cover as well. Also a booth exclusive. And if you like this one as well, not very expensive either. 22 ish dollars on eBay. You can pick one up right now. I didn't see a print count on this one either, so I'm not sure how high that one, one was. Um, very similar to the fact with Ninja Turtles coming out number mm -hmm. one. Uh, there was a ton of exclusives for Ninja Turtles. Surprisingly enough, none of them made our list. We didn't have any of the Ninja Turtle books on there. My biggest thing was with the Turtle books is they felt like they were too big of a money grab because they're like every book had, there was like four books of every single one because you had to have every single turtle and then they're expecting people to like buy all four books, which some of them looked good, but I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. you know how that goes, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Number seven on the list. Time to jump back in the pool. I believe that's Deadpool number four. It's a Mark Brooks cover, I believe. Yeah. And it's a Simba homage, and I love the Lion King, so that's fantastic. And it also looks like it's going uh, off the cliff. And it's very, very relevant right now, since the Deadpool movie just recently I came out. I thought you were going to say, because Simba's really relevant. Simba's always relevant. Yeah, this is a... Uh, 
actually kind of a fun book. I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, but the team here really loves it. Yeah, they're on Pride Rock. He's uh, hanging Wolverine over, like, you know, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Uh, surprisingly enough, uh, this is actually a pretty expensive book. It runs somewhere between $50 and $60 if you want to pick up a copy on eBay. And it was also a booth exclusive. I didn't see a print count on this one either. It probably has some kind of print count, but uh, Mark Brooks doesn't usually go like that limited that, that I've seen in the past. Sometimes. I guess sometimes. He could. Good book, though. Yeah, it's fantastic. Without surprise, it was a pretty expensive book. Yes, yes, yes. Fun one. It's mm -hmm. a fun one. Number six on the list. We're almost halfway there. Yes. We got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, number one, I believe. Mastodon! It's uh, yeah, <laughs> something like that. It's a Jenny Frizen cover. We all like Jenny Frizen in this house. It's very well uh, constructed cover. I think it's also foil. Yes. So and... This is a foil edition, yeah. Really beautiful cover, and believe it or not, there was actually a lot of older books that they refoiled for the con. That seems to be something that happens a lot now. People really like this cover, and then they're like, hey, let's slap a foil on it, add it to the San Diego Comic Con. This was probably the only one that we really, really liked over the other one. So this is actually an older book that they refoiled. Um, however, this version is selling for quite a bit. It was limited to only 300 copies. It was uh, sold at a booth at the con. And a lot of these were signed. So they are getting them, like most of them are signed by Jenny Frizen. They're selling between $150 and $200 for this book. In the signed version, I just almost everything I saw online was already signed. So Dang. I feel like she was, she must have been there, and they're just like, sign this book. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you? Love it. All right, number five on the list, and a homie to the show. You got Amazing Spider Man 52. Yeah. It's a John Jang virgin cover. Woo! Nice uh, little background, almost like a negative space, almost. Uh, yeah, Spider Man crawling up on the wall or crawling down the wall. And I like that. It's pretty, pretty sweet. It's slick cover. Yeah, uh, definitely awesome. It's a black suit cover, limited to 600 copies. And if you guys aren't as familiar with John Jiang's work, he's definitely coming up. Um, a lot of places want to use, a lot of companies want to use his variant covers for their books. And he almost has sort of like a metallic style artwork to it. It looks really good. Um, I have bought a couple of his books in the past that had a limited print count. And they were, uh, they held their value really well. A lot of people looking mm -hmm. for these. And he'll do a really awesome signature for you on this as well. If you're wanting to pick this one up, it's still selling for a little over $60 a pop. Um, and it was a booth exclusive. I'm assuming John was there mm. at San Diego. I'm yeah. guessing he was there selling this at his booth. But yeah, if you ever, if you ever see him, go over and talk to him. A very personable guy. He'll even take pictures with you. And just really, really cool. Yeah. Number four on the list. Yeah, so you got Scarlet Witch number two by Peach Momoko, my good friend. Uh, actually, not good friend. I don't know. Maybe maybe she knows me. Uh, it's a really great uh, Scarlet Witch cover holding the Sharky. Uh, I thought that was really fun. Sharky. Uh, uh, play on the cover. So, yeah, I think this is one of the better Peach Momoko covers I've seen in a while. Yeah, this is, this is a fun cover. I really like, I mean... Scarlet Witch is a really fun character to draw, and I feel like she has so many good covers of all the of all the females in the Marvel universe. Scarlet Witch has some of the better covers of of a lot of characters, and she's holding everyone's favorite Jeffrey the Shark in the middle, who's kind of like a Deadpool character with her. So that's kind of cool that they're together. Um, surprisingly enough, I'm not sure how you obtain this book at the con, but it's a Marvel Unlimited Plus member exclusive. So you had to be a Marvel uh -huh. Unlimited, which is the reading app that actually I use. And uh, you had to like show that you're a, a, a member exclusive on the app. And then you were able to obtain this book in some way at the con. So it's kind of cool that in that fashion, which probably the reason why it's selling for over $65 on uh, on eBay right now. So, uh -huh. yeah, I kind of yeah, I like the idea behind that. Yeah, pretty, pretty Fun good way idea. to get a book. Yes, yeah, easy. Number three on the list. Let's talk about the Dark Knight. Yes. And his favorite lady. Yeah. Well, one of his favorite ladies. <laughs> the Mac Daddy Pimp. I don't know if he likes that. her that much, right? Well, wouldn't you given off that pheromone? Yeah, I mean, that's everybody true. Everybody likes true. it. So this is a Batman 609. Uh, obviously, it's kind of supposed to be a homage or a play on uh, the Hush thing. Yeah. And this is... Uh, Who's the artist again? Will Jack. Will Jack. Yeah, the famous Will Jack. That's the one I could never yeah. remember. I like Will Jack. 
but uh, yeah, it's a great cover. One of my fav one of my favorite ladies of DC. I love Poison Ivy. I think she yeah, did a good job on that one. All the different versions of her are fantastic. Besides one, I will not mention that one. But this is a great version right there. Yeah, it's looking if, real. Sick. If Scarlet Witch is the uh, good one to draw for Marvel, uh, Poison Ivy is the opposite to her for DC. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, this is actually a foil cover as well. So it's in a foil. It's limited to 500. You could pick it up at the booth. And it sells for uh, a little bit. A little mm -hmm. pretty penny. 65 to $80 is Ooh. the average selling price of this one if you want Dang. to pick up a copy. Uh, yep. Will Jack kills it. Yeah. And surprisingly, nice. his ladies kind of look similar but don't look similar mm -hmm. they don't look they just all are beautiful so i don't know how he does that they mm -hmm. all have their very unique look like this looks like poison ivy and not like power girl or wonder woman i don't know it's cool how he does that i don't know how he does it i don't know but i know about number two on the list and this may be a uh underrated one so you might want to look out for it it is uh spectacular Spider-Man number one it's a uh, ramos cover I really think this is a very funny because it's almost like graffiti mu mural kind of thing mm -hmm. play on it, and it has two of the favorite spider people of all time on the cover, Miles and Peter. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, Spider Men is a new comic book. I think it's up to like issue five or six right now. Very hot book, and it's starring Peter and Miles in their in their own book again, which they've done this twice before. This is just the most current one. Humberto Ramos doing the cover. It is They call this the Color Splash variant for it, which when you get Miles and you get graffiti in the same book, it tends to get hot just because of the movie and the cool graffiti stuff that he mm. does. If you're looking for this one, it's limited to only $600. Wait. Wait, 600 copies. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just like thinking of the same thing. Look we'll up. It's limited to 600 copies. And I didn't realize this book was going to be expensive. I was thinking, like, Spider-Man is cool. I like the characters. Yeah, this book is selling between $80 and $100 for this wow. book. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for that one, it might be hard to find. And it's, it's really cool. Yes, a little <sighs> spendy. What are we at now? Number one. Number one on the list! Could so, you guess it? It's a Witchblade number one, but mm -hmm. the Campbell exclusive sketch cover basically that i think they call it something specific but yeah you can only get it at the booth or in the aftermarket it's it's a fantastic cover i would say it's probably one of the best campbell cover i have seen in a long time i wish there was a little bit of background stuff going on but at the same time she's the prize so yeah you, you gotta make sure that nothing outshines her yeah, it's a nice original pose, too, because sometimes people think that, like, Campbell, a lot of his girls are in the same poses, and this is not a pose you see very often for other characters, so it's nice that he did an original pose for Witchblade on this one. This is actually, the sketch cover is cover B for this book. I'm not really sure how this was, it's labeled a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, but I'm not sure how you got it at the con. There is a color version of this, which is the 1 in 50 ratio variant for... Uh, for the Witchblade series. And this one's hard to find. It's not really uh, out there. It sells for somewhere over $100. Kinda, it varies a lot. Some You could think there's some online right now that are available for $99. You could just pick one up if you want it. There's some that are, have the signature on it that are a little bit more expensive. I'm not sure the print count. It wasn't really listed anywhere. There's a lot available for sale, which is a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. Compared to some of the other books on this list, it's very easy to find on eBay. Mm -hmm. It's just all over on the pricing. So if you like it, uh, it's our number one just because it's a cool, really cool book. But it's pretty nice. Yeah. Pretty nice. Mm. Yes. Now, what we're on. What we're going to talk about, though. The bottom numbers. five. Uh, the bottom. This was hard, six. guys. Um, there was a lot of books that were there's a lot of books that weren't the best in the world and we there's a lot of books that we wrote down and some of them we weren't even sure what the book was so it could have been a really bad cover or was a really bad cover but we weren't even really sure how to talk about it so we try to stick to books that everyone at least knew the names of the books that were going on but let's kick it off we got we start at the bottom because it's the bottom five. Number five of the worst covers of San Diego Comic Con voted on by us. I'm sorry for any of the artists that drew these. We don't mean to rag on you too bad. Uh, this is the 30th anniversary She. Uh, the Way of the Warrior, number one. Uh, yeah, it's a body positive She, if you can uh, really look at it. Uh, it's 
a lot of open space, so I would say it's a little lazy. The dress is, or the swimsuit is pretty crappy. Um, <laughs> pretty crappy. It's pretty crappy. I'm just, I'm just saying, it's not my favorite cover, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, it's a Billy Tucci cover, which is surprising because he's actually a really good artist. I, I'm sure he had his reasons for drawing this one um, in this fashion. Uh, the proportions are a little bit off, like her arms are a little skinnier than maybe they should be as opposed with like her waist, you know, and like the, you know, whatever. It's not everyone's cover. However, it's limited to only a hundred copies. So they only made a hundred of this sweet bad boy. And, uh, it's so rare that no one has decided to sell this. It's actually like not available. I couldn't find any available for sale online or sold. So I don't know, like, (laughs) did nobody pick this up? Did everyone pick it up? It's a strange book. For a she, normally a very like drawn very sexy. Yeah, this is a different kind of she. So, yeah. and there is other she's there that were drawn very sexy. So I don't know. Yes. Billy Tucci, what's going on? Billy, what? number four on the list. This may be a surprise to y'all guys. This is uh, Godzilla versus Cthulhu. Death, death may die. Death, death may die. Yeah, weird title too. Um, it's it's. It's drawn decently, but it just it wasn't performed very well. It's it has whoever did the art is a good artist. It just why would you just have a face face like a versus match, but it's like just leave out nothing else. Like, I don't know. The Godzilla face. face looks bad. Aww. The Cthulhu face isn't ba- isn't isn't that bad, but the Godzilla face is bad. I'm looking at some of the lines. He's got like a weasel nose. They're looking at like. He looks like a hand puppet. It's like two hand puppets like going. Did you at look it. at some of like the old school Godzilla ones? I know. That's what. That's what I. I you think, think he's like channeling the old Godzilla. Yeah, I think he's channeling the old Godzilla. I think the art is good. Just this cover is really bad, and you should rethink your life a little bit. Well, Zach may be right because also "Death May Die" is a weird kind of title. Like yeah. "Death May Die." Well, of course it does. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Mayberry did the cover on this. I'm not as familiar with his work, but. This is actually kind of an expensive book. I'm not sure where the print count is. It sells for around $75 by itself. There's also a promo book that came out kind of not with this, but alongside. A lot of people are selling them together. That promo book sells for like $300. So um, it's like a smaller version that goes with it. So we might not be right on this one being a bad cover. Although I think the Godzilla head looks weird. It looks looks like a hand puppet. It's like, right? That's what one of the Godzillas looks like. We're, we're, we're bashing on old characters. Let's kick it up with the next one. Number three on the list. It's a Flash Gordon number one. It's a Mad Cave exclusive. I think Mad Cave is actually the pun- the publisher for this book, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, not just their exclusive, but they're publishing the whole book. I, I Yeah. I don't know who the artist is. Uh, it's Ian Churchill, who's oh, actually a pretty good he's artist. He's a really good artist. Yeah, Ian Churchill's a good artist. It's not like... The proportions are nice on them, like the bodies look good, just what's with the faces are like, huh? Like just staring off in the middle of nowhere and like... We want to have two confused heroes on the cover and a bunch of random stuff in the background on the, the evil guy in the background too. And yeah, let's do that. That's really what I feel about the cover, that they just wanted to splash some crap on it. Yeah, it could have been better. I mean, for I'm just wondering... Um... This is a strange book as well. It was it was sold at the booth. I'm sure the Mad Cave booth. Also, um, maybe an indication why it wasn't so good. There is no sales or books listed on eBay for this. I didn't even get a print count. So there may be a lot of them and just nobody bought it. I just can't imagine how many people were like going up to the Mad Cave booth and like, hook me up with that Flash Gordon book. Flash Gordon's a cool character. It's a great character. This might not be a cool book. But if you do like it, to each his own, we're not telling you you have to hate it. No. Um, you know, again, let us down, know in the comments if you do really like this one. Number two on the list, we've got... Uh, we got Thundercat Chitara number one. Chitara's it's, back. Uh, it's supposed to be a negative space. I don't know if it's... The dude that does all the naked space. It is not, not the dude that does the regular naked space. If it was the dude, it would be a lot better. <laughs> the dude. The dude. Uh, th- this is just a, a, just a blah Chitara. I love Chitara, and it makes me mad that someone would draw her so poorly, and act like it's great. So whoever did this cover, I hate you forever. Yeah, I don't know about that, but forever. Domenico Carbone did this cover, and. 
Uh, kind of annoyed me a little bit with the Thundercats universe putting out these extra books. Just stick to the main title. I don't know why we're jumping off into why Chitara needs her own solo book, but whatever. You know, it seems like Zach always says a money grab when they're like, hey, we got a hot book going on. Let's try to make more money off. It makes sense, I guess. But this is an odd one as well. It's clear that the cover is not liked because it's limited to 500 copies. So it's a very limited book. But you can buy it for as cheap as $20 right now on eBay. So it's clearly the people have spoken, mm -hmm. but they do not care for this Chitara. There is some good Chitara books that came out, though, this, this you know? at San Diego Comic-Con. Check them out. Yeah, it could have mm -hmm. been Snarf. They should have done Snarf. Sexy Stupid. Snarf? Sexy Snarf. Sexy Stupid. Snarf. Yeah. And number one on the list is a tie of books that we are just sick and tired of. And maybe you guys aren't, or maybe you are, but we'd love to hear... What your guys' thoughts on it. Number one is... Uh, Batman 150 and All-Star Superman number one. Here's the Batman 150. It's and what's wrong with these? That, <laughs> I'm about to get to that. Oh, okay. Jeez. Uh, it's Batman 150 and All-Star Superman number one. It's just the logos. It's one of the laziest ways to do a cover. Besides a blank sketch cover... Or just like, at least there's a purpose for that. Yeah, 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 at least a purpose. This one just like, hey, you like his logos, these guys' logos, buy this book. It's foil. Just give me your freaking money. It's it's stupid. It's I I, I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. And whoever did it, did, did the artists actually do this? Did they should they have gotten paid? No, they shouldn't have got paid because this is crap. Yeah, it's probably computer just generated like Batman symbol. Go. Batman. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. There's some, there are a lot of people like these where maybe you can get signatures on them, I guess. But at the same time, we are kind of tired of them. They, they got popular a couple years ago. They keep showing up at the big cons where people foil out just the chess symbols of characters. And uh, we don't like them. You may like them. It's cool if you do. We're not like telling anybody how you should feel. Or are we? But, um, yeah, they just, I didn't even look up the prices for these because I don't care about them. It would just be a book that if I got, I wouldn't care about this book. I'd be like, eh, eh. Oh. Now people are going to send them to us, I bet you, now. It's like, hey, here's this. You can, now it's in your collection. Yeah. Now you feel obligated to keep it. Unless you like, like no. hang it on the wall. Yeah. No, burn it. Burn it. No, never burn a comic. That's bad juju. Mm -hmm. You get bad luck. So that's San Diego Comic Con in a nutshell by the games crew. Whew, that was fun, guys. Well, we're always mixing up, doing things crazy. So do us a huge favor right now. Hit the like button. The princess likes it. If we get enough likes, maybe we'll go to San Diego Comic-Con next year. We get how many likes on this? We'll go to San Diego. 500 likes? 500 likes. We'll go 500 to likes on this video. We will go to San Diego Comic-Con next year and get you a symbol cover. Yes, a symbol cover. Leave a comment down Earth. below. Follow us because we're awesome. And uh, Zach, you got anything else? Yeah, yeah, sure. How you do this? You gotta go to your fridge, pull out your favorite type of milk, and also go to your cupboard and pull out your favorite type of cereal. Just have some breakfast, guys. Just have some breakfast. And breakfast is a lie. It's the most important meal of the day. It's a lie. But in my opinion, get those gains. Yeah, if you haven't had cereal in a long time, give it a try. It's still really good. Really good. It's a lie. All right. Until we see you next time, guys, stay safe and remember, get those cereal gains. Get every single one. It's a